I've been fiddling around with this plate. We've got a couple beads, practice beads going on here. I'm going to run a bead over this and actually show you how to form a bead. I've repositioned the plate so that you can see it. And I'll be running the torch this way in an effort to make sure that you can actually see the puddle form and the movement of the dipping of the rod and so on. And we'll talk about that as we go along. Again, for the purpose of a flame, we want to take the torch out a bit and then bring it, bring the flame in with the oxygen until we have a nice cone. It's a lot of heat, plenty. We want to resist having this uh, pop back or flash back. So let's not get too carried away with the heat. I'll try to keep the torch tip slightly out of the way here so that you can see the puddle formation. And the idea here, the idea here is to heat this metal to the point that it's liquefied. And we want uniform heat on both sides of the center line of the weld. That heat should be uniform. If we apply too much heat, it's going to pop back. What we're trying to do is just liquefy it. You see me moving the torch away from the puddle when I think it's too hot. And keeping the cone removed from the excessive heat. And we're starting to get a little bit of liquid here. There's our liquid. Remember, we're going to dip the filler into the liquid puddle. We're not going to run heat up the filler rod. You notice that I have the filler rod away from the heat. And as that starts to liquefy, I'm oscillating the torch back and forth. I've got some filler from the previous weld. I'm actually going over the top of the earlier weld, so I'm just introducing enough filler to make a crown. And keeping the flow of metal uniform by oscillating the torch, you notice here I don't have any filler applied. And let's take a look at that. Okay, now we're going to take this piece of plate, purposely blew a hole through it, and I'm going to make a pass over an existing pass here. Again, to show you the way to handle the puddle, control the molten puddle, and where to introduce filler. And you can follow closely and try to move along with the process and see the way I'm moving the torch. When I say oscillating, I mean in a crescent shape, kind of a swinging. The technique that you're going to use for other processes, including stick and also in MIG, kind of a crescent shape here. You want to make the heat uniform across each side of the plate. This is a nice burned in pass through here so we can make a crown over the top of it. And again, I'm just trying to show technique here. And I get to this point here, pay attention to how I fill the hole. This hole is not an obstacle, it's not going to be a problem, we'll go ahead and fill it. I'm going to use a fairly hot flame here since we already have an existing pass. There's no gap. Take it out about like that. Crack down the oxygen until we have a neutral flame. See the length of the cone this time, that's a pretty hot pass. And let's begin at the edge of the weld here. Find a good way to brace your filler. You're going to come over the top of the filler. I'll try to keep the torch low. I actually should have it on a slightly steeper angle than this. But I'm going to make a point of angling it so that you can see it. So you can follow the cone. Puddle. Watch the puddle form. Got a puddle. And what's interesting is you'll get a, and this happens with TIG too, you get a slight cooling effect once you start introducing filler. And the net result of that is it helps offset the risk of the popping and the flash and all of that stuff. And I'm trusting you can see this. I'll review it and make sure that you can. It's important. Again, this is uh, practice. I'm trying to get used to the use of the torch. Keep the filler away from the puddle until you're ready to dip in. Notice how this is more uniform this time. We'll have a nice crown to this bead. We're approaching the hole. Not a problem. This is all molten metal, so 
take the opposite side down a little bit, reduce the size of the hole in the process. The idea is to make this one continuous piece of metal proper thickness. Remember that if you fuse this properly, the, uh, the filler metal is as strong as the actual plate in this case. We're using ER70S2, 70,000 tinsel. It's really okay to fill that hole completely with filler and consider that uh, as long as your fusion is there with the basic plate metal, to consider that a part of your weld and move right on from there. There's no problem with strength in that area. And there you go, the hole is gone. Again, we turn off our acetylene first, turn off the oxygen after that, that purges the lines, and we actually have a, a strength weld here. Well, that wraps up session number six, gas welding. Our goal here was to control the heat and move metal around. We even filled a hole in this case, and uh, that's a very substantial repair, if you will, in that section of the metal. Uh, next time around, we'll strive for the perfect looking bead and the perfect crown on our weld with exactly the right penetration through the coupon at the weld section. Looking forward to session number seven of gas welding. I trust this was helpful. Thanks.